<clears throat> In our scripture reading for today, the Apostle Paul writes, Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. This is a very, the very important theological point, but the way that Paul writes makes it very difficult to understand. So I just want to take the first half of that statement first. We are justified. We are made right with God. Let's see. We were made right with God through Jesus Christ. And so, and so the God who created the whole universe and is intimately and powerfully part of your life, that God loves you. You live in God's love and grace every day because of Jesus. Now in the second part, Paul is trying to explain why a God who loves you would allow you to suffer in this world. Because life is inherently painful. There are many different kinds of physical suffering, and there are many different kinds of spiritual, or mental, or emotional sufferings. And no matter who you are, you will have suffering in your life. So why do we have this suffering if God loves you? And Paul's answer to that question is, you have suffering in this life so that you can learn to hope. Let me say that again. You have suffering in this life so that you can learn to hope. You have suffering in this life so that you can learn to look for more. So that you can learn to hope for more. If this life were perfect and peaceful and blissful Garden of Eden, you would not want for anything more. And Paul is saying, and I'm saying, and all of Christianity is saying that there is more to life. There is more to reality than just what you see on the surface of this life, on the surface of this world. You can, well, you can just look at our political environment and you know that there has got to be something more. You can look at all the diseases and poverty and pain in this world and you know that there has got to be something more. And so the Apostle Paul is saying that the more that you see and experience the pains of this world, the more that you will have to continually remind yourself of the hope that Jesus brings. And the more that you cling to that hope of Jesus Christ, the more and more that hope will grow within you. So that in the future, when you see or experience sufferings in this world, you will immediately, instinctively react with hope. A transcendent hope that God will bring something good out of this situation. Somehow, God will correct this injustice. Somehow, in the end, 
God will transform this reality and bring healing and justice and peace and love in spite of the suffering and evils in this world. For instance, in the past few years, one of our members, Judy, has been helping this lady in our community get her groceries because she couldn't drive. And last year, the lady was forced out of her low-income housing because they were closing the McAllister Hotel. And that is a true tragedy. Where was this lady going to go? Last week, I found out that the lady was transferred to a better, more modern seniors' apartment in the Hanover Shoes Building. So what had started out as a terrible tragedy ended up to become a story of hope and blessing. A few years ago, another older lady in our community was coming out of a Lenten luncheon at one of our churches, and she fell backwards and hit her head and suffered a severe concussion and some brain injury. It took her about a year of recovery and therapy. But today, she is living an excellent, vibrant life. A devastating situation. But she received an absolute miracle. And her life today serves as a stunning witness of hope. I've known some of our members who were having severe memory loss and even, even people in the past who were suffering hallucinations and other illnesses and eventually it was discovered that these symptoms were being caused by one or other of their medications. And so when the offending medication was taken away, the memory loss and unsteadiness in one person because of one medication, and the hallucinations that were happening in another person because of a different medication completely disappeared. And you can look at the various medical miracles that have happened in your life or the lives of your family members. Are other miracles of accidents survived? Are other miracles of people who were alienated being reunited, are people who could not find housing in our area and they just had to build a brand new house and now here they are, just moved into their brand new house in a fantastic location. And, and I could go on and on with stories large and small. I just heard a story from one of our interns going on, on internship and he had been convicted of almost beating a man to death in a bar fight. And he went to jail for 12 years. And when he got out, someone sponsored him to go to college. And then after college, someone sponsored him to go to seminary. And now, graduating from seminary, He's going to internship, and he is going to be a blessed force in the world for God. All of these various miracles may seem like they're separate incidents in the lives of very different people, and yet they all point to the power of God that moves underneath the surface events of our lives, of your life. And the more and more you learn to see these amazing events happening everywhere, the more you see God's hand blessing you and the lives of people you know, the more that you see God's presence everywhere. And the more you live in God's transcendent hope every day. Now, I'm not saying 
that everyone gets healed, or that every injustice is corrected right away. But I am saying that there is an undercurrent of God's power flowing underneath the surface of reality, of this reality that you and I live in. It is it is like an underground river, an underground stream of hope, an aquifer of hope, if you will. And Jesus has given you the Spirit of God. Jesus has given you the power to access, the faith to access that power, to access that current, to access that flowing stream of hope and grace beneath the surface of life. In the name of Jesus.